What is up guys? Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and we're going to be taking you into a store with us to show you how we trained for our therapy dog certification. So I have Larcy with me. She is a two-year-old golden retriever. If you're new to the channel, I do have two golden retrievers. My other golden is only one years old, so I'm going to wait just a little bit longer before I work on getting her certified to be a therapy dog. But since we announced that she passed her test, we've gotten so many questions about it and and there's a lot of things that I think people just don't understand about a therapy dog, like what it is versus other types of dogs, what you can do, what all it actually entails for the training. So I'm going to go over everything that they test on for the video and kind of demonstrate as much as I can by myself what that looks like so that way you can train yourself if you want your dog to be a therapy dog and to give you an idea of what they're actually going to be testing you on if you want your dog to become a certified therapy dog. So unfortunately, I'm probably not going to do any talking inside the store just because I I know that they play songs, they play music, and if I talk and leave that audio in, I'm probably going to get copyrighted. So I'm going to run through this real quick and then I will put all the footage that I get from inside the store to explain kind of what's going on. So the first thing that they check on is reaction to strangers. Of course, if you're going to have a therapy dog, you need them to be able to behave and react politely to strangers. They will have a stranger approach. The dog has to show little to no reaction to any direct or rapid approach. Anyone that comes up to them and catches them off guard, the dog has to to show little to no reaction to someone approaching them to pet them from behind. So we call this like a little bump on the butt. That's how we would practice this. Stranger handling. The dog has to accept a touch and dental stroking on the entire body. So they go over the lips, the tails, the legs, each part of the body, the ears. They touch everything to make sure that the dog isn't going to get aggressive or nervous about anything. The dog has to be calm under continuous eye contact. So ideally, when you're staring into the dog's eyes, you want them to look away. You want them to show that amount of submissiveness and not that they're gonna sit there and challenge you. The next thing is accepting a prolonged hug for 15 seconds. Out of everything on this test, this was Larcy's hardest one because she doesn't like being confined. When you're coming up to her to give her a hug from the front, because I think she felt like more trapped, less control. If you come up to her and approach her with a hug on the side, she was much more accepting with that. She's not aggressive or anything about it. It's just that she wanted to back away. She wanted to get out of it. The next thing is out for a walk. So your dog has to walk under control at all times and the dog and the handler can walk in a designated pattern with several stops and about turns at different paces, whether that's slow, medium, or fast. Basically, they wanna make sure that you have good leash control with your dog and they're not pulling you around. They're not dragging you around. They're not lunging at things. You're gonna be weaving through cones. You're gonna be weaving through poles. You're gonna be weaving through people. And you're able to to do this whether you're walking really fast or really slow or just at a normal rate. Next thing is walking through a crowd. This includes medical equipment. So as a therapy dog, your dog is likely going to be around people who are using medical equipment at times, whether that's a geriatric, special needs, a child. The dog has to properly navigate around or near medical equipment like a wheelchair, cane, a walker, stuff like that. So basically they'll weave in between. They'll have someone sitting in the wheelchair. Your dog has to come up to the person sitting in the wheelchair and politely greet them, politely be able to sit there without jumping on top of them. Same thing with the cane and the walker. They have to be able to greet the person in a calm, friendly, gentle manner. They cannot be jumping up on them. They cannot be scared. They cannot show any signs of aggressiveness. The next thing is politely greeting a client. Like I said, you're greeting someone sitting next to them in a wheelchair. You're greeting them sitting next to them in a walker. You're greeting them while they're seated in a chair. Crowd petting. The dog has to be able to sustain control during crowd petting of three or more people. So if a horde of people just come up to your dog, which at therapy visits, they will, your dog has to be able to be under control at all times. They cannot be jumping up. They can't be losing their mind. They can't get aggressive. They can't get nervous. They have to be able to withstand that. Larcy honestly thought it was like the best day of her life and was like, oh my God, this is great. She's like wagging her tail. Her tongue's out sideways. She's looking at me like, oh my gosh, everybody just loves me. She just thinks that like everyone was just there just to see her. The dog also has to show little to no fear with grand gestures and movements. So if someone is clapping really loudly or someone has special needs, someone is petting them clumsily, if someone is coming up to them and they're stomping or making loud noises, the dog can realize that there is a noise there, but again, they can't get upset about it, they can't get aggressive about it, and they can't start freaking out. Sit and down on command. Sit and stay on command.
So the dog has to sustain a sit stay for one minute. And they have to sustain a down stay for three minutes. And this was all done with distractions, with people walking around, with other dogs there, people pushing carts, people talking, music, sounds going on in a store. When you're out on a visit, there's going to be all sorts of different commotion and movement and people and sounds and smells. So your dog has to be used to being able to sustain that position for prolonged periods of time, regardless of what's going on. The next thing is reaction to distractions. The dog has to accept an audible sound of yelling, crying, coughing, a ventilator sound, something of that sort. What we did for the test was crying, so we had someone come sit up in a chair and they started crying. Larcy had to react in a positive way. So basically she was just like, oh my gosh, like, are you okay? Like, how can I help you? How can I fix it? But she just can't jump on them. She can't put her paws on them. She can't start freaking out. She can't get scared. She can't get nervous. She can't get aggressive. The dog has to be able to take a treat nicely from an open hand, palm, and fingers. So you'd give a treat like this and they'd have to be able to take it out of that stranger's hand without trying to bite their hand off. The dog has to be able to ignore food or high value treats when they're passing at a close distance within a foot. So we would do this a couple different ways. We did this with cones. In class, we'd have cheeseburgers, we'd have pieces of pizza sitting on top of the cones and the dog had to weave through that and ignore it. Or if we were in stores, we would flip over buckets. We would use chairs. We would put the treats on top of the chairs, on top of the buckets so that it was right at her nose level. And again, she had to be able to ignore it. Your dog has to have a really strong leave it because if you're or going on a visit and someone drops something on the floor or someone's eating something, they can't be sitting there freaking out the whole time. They have to be used to that and just ignoring it. Same thing, your dog will not pick up a dropped item, whether it's food or a pill. If you're going to a nursing home and someone drops a pill on the floor, you better make sure that your dog is not gonna pick up that pill. Your dog does not react to a person at dog eye level, whether they are lying or sitting on the floor, including childlike behaviors while at eye level. If you're going to go see kids, they're probably going to be at their eye level. They have to be able to react in a positive, controlled manner. The dog has to demonstrate that it is a willing and interested participant. And then you, as the handler, have to be appropriately dressed for a therapy visit. You can't have some slang on your t-shirt. You can't be wearing a crop top. You can't be wearing a mini skirt. The handler has to have appropriate supplies for the dog, which would be a six foot leash, a drool cloth, waste bags, treats, water, a water dish. The handler has to be friendly and enthusiastic and aware of the dog's reactions and correcting them accordingly. So when I'm training with Larcy, my eyes are always consistently on her. I'm always watching what she's doing. I'm always paying attention to her and picking up on her cues so I can prevent her from doing certain things. And the handler has to be in control at all times. So for me, Larcy is excited. She is a two-year-old golden retriever. She's going to be excited when she sees people, but the big thing is, is I still have to be able to control her, and she has to be able to still act in a polite manner, even when she's excited. She cannot completely lose her mind like she used to, <laughs> so that's one thing that we really, really, really had to work on. And then the other thing is that your dog has to have a good positive reaction to another dog. So your dog can't be barking at other dogs, it can't be lunging at other dogs, it can't be acting aggressive to other dogs. Also for us, we had to pass the Canine Good Citizen course and that test before we were able to take the therapy dog test. I'm not sure if this is like a nationwide thing. I think so but it could be wrong. I couldn't include the information card on that, but that is just basically another obedience course that you have to pass before you can even take the therapy dog test or take the test prep classes for it. So that is the run through of everything that is on the test. I'm gonna pull that up on my phone while we're in the store, just so that way I hopefully I don't forget to go over any of it. I apologize, it is super windy today, so hopefully you can't hear that too bad in the background. But Larcy and I are going to head in the store and we will 
show you how it's done. Real quick before we go, we will be making more therapy dog videos, so if there's anything in particular that you want to see or have questions on, please let me know down in the comments so that I know to go over them in the videos or to make a video on it. Feel free to follow our journey if you would like. You can follow her on Instagram at Life with Larcy. If you enjoyed this video, if you find it helpful, make sure you hit the like button. I do post new videos every single Sunday, so if you enjoy dog content, then feel free to subscribe, and I hope to see you right back here next Sunday for my next video. Bye guys. I love you. Good girl. We're actually filming a video. <laughs> You're fine. Oh, you can. You can pet her. Yeah, yeah. You can pet her.